continue to be blessed by your word. Father, I pray that your word will minister to us. Father, you're the only one can teach us exactly what you want us to do in this life mm. and with your word. Holy Spirit, you are the one. You are the best teacher. I pray that you teach us, oh God, that you open our heart and our ears to accept your word and for what you want us to do in this life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen and amen, amen and amen. 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 God is good. All the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So feel free to ship it, okay, because this is a Bible study. Amen. 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 So this this is First Corinthians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And obviously, but that peace have already there with it. Madam as well have there, but at least I have there. So today, I kind of like, uh, it's, remember this is a letter. So supposedly, pastor is not here. Let's say pastor is in Nigeria. And he continued hearing the things going on in the church. He wrote in the ministry. And he decided, okay, he had enough. What's he going to do? You know, those days, that's not my phone. So what he did was what pastor have to write to us. Amen. Amen. So I want us to see us as a family. And then in a family, you're always going to get the father. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the father in this case, in this church, is uh, Pastor Peter. So that means he's writing us a letter to kind of way to address us for the things that he's hearing. You see? And that's where you need to picture uh, Corinthians church as a whole. I used to hear people used to say, it's good to go back to the old way people used to fellowship in the church. Listen, when I was studying today, I was asking myself, if that's the picture, if that's the picture, if that actually the picture of the way people used to live in the past, then that means we need to work on it because Apostle Paul was writing to them. Amen? Amen. So if if I I'm gonna start the one gonna start a bit, I start from the end. For some reason I decided to do that today. Amen. Amen. So I'm gonna read it the four actually I'll read from First Corinthians chapter chapter four. Verse 19 to, to 21. He says this, but I will come to you soon. Mm. If the war, if, if the Lord wills, and I will find that not to talk of those arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God does not constant in talk, but what in power. Mm -hmm. And then he says the, the, the word that I actually hear is what do you wish? Should I come with you with a rod? That means with Italy, like back of the world. Okay. <laughs> Amen? Or will I come with you with the love in spirit of what? Gentleness. So you have to pick and choose what Apostle Paul was saying to the church. He said, so supposedly I walk inside a room. You know, I'm a nosy person. So for example, I don't know, some of you might be a nosy person as well. You're walking and people have, have like a conversation going on. And then you just kind of hear what they're saying. And you only have one conversation from one side. You cannot make sense, sense of it. And uh, why? Because you only have one conversation from one side. So it is a challenge for you to do what? To actually understand what is going on. Because this letter was opposed to Paul addressing to the church. So now you only hearing what Paul is saying. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in that room, I'm going to pretend like I'm doing something because I want to hear what is going on. I want to find out what is going on. You know? I don't know about you, but if I walk in a place that is a confrontation, there's a, there's a conversation going on. I want to actually hear what is going on. So that is me and you now. Hearing what Apostle Paul is writing to this church. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you can see it sounds very intense because the end of the chapter was like, do you want me to see you to come as a rod? Or should I come to you with what? In the spirit of what? Love. You see, so you as a person need to pick and choose, you see. And then... If because this church have lots of problems, so Apostle Paul have to deal with the issue with this church. You see, now if you have a look, I have ten things I kind of write and consign the Corinthian consign this church in Corinth. Amen? Amen. So Paul is addressing to them. So the, my first my first thing have to do with what this church, the immaturity of the of the of this church. You see, the first one is division among themselves. Some people say I follow Paul Apollos. Some people say I follow Paul. Some some people say I follow Cephas. That's a Peter. And some people say I follow Christ. You see, the second one is this: some of them are looking for wisdom. They are looking for worldly wisdom. I said, it's only looking for wisdom that comes from above. The Bible says, wisdom that comes from above is what is pure. Mm -hmm. But they are looking for the wisdom that is below, which is earthly wisdom. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And the third one is the arrogant of the opposition to what to pause. Leadership, you see, they're kind of challenging Paul. 
And some people say, okay, they prefer Paul. And other people say they prefer Cephas, which is Peter. Some people say they prefer Apollos. You see, so you can see what is going on, and you can see Apostle Paul looking at them like these people. They, they're just men, man. They couldn't understand because who died for who died for them was Christ. It wasn't Apo it wasn't Apollos. It wasn't Paul. It was Christ that died for them. So that is another thing Apostle Paul was addressing to them. Then the fourth one is what. The sexual immorality that was in the church. Mm. I mean, if you if you have a look in the book of First Corinthians chapter six, if you read from nineteen, then those are negatives, you know. And then if you come to verse twelve, it's saying such as some of you, but you have not been washed with what by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And then verse number five is also it was they are suing and um, one another in the secular court. You see, let let me put it in this way: if I have a problem with any one of you today. If I cannot set it, set you with you, guess who I'm gonna call? I'm gonna call a pastor. Amen? Amen. We are not allowed to do what to take our case to where to the worldly people because the Bible says there's no way you can do that. Amen. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Bible says that whatever can I make you go to that land, why not just give everything mm -hmm. to the person and let there be what? Let there be peace. Mm -hmm. Because we are meant to do what? To let go of our hands instead of holding things. Amen? Amen? And then another one is what? The lack of grace towards one another because obviously they were not impatient with people who are not maturing the Lord again. And some of them were so uh, growing. Another one, number seven, is what? The misuse of Lord's Supper. We know when we come across that, you can find out that some of them eat themselves to the point of what? Sickness. And the Bible says some of them even die in the process, you see? Another one, the misuse of what? Special power. Another one is what the lack of love towards one another. And the and the third one is what confession concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So these are the things Paul have to deal with this earlier church. Amen. Amen. And that is why I'm telling you today. If you find any perfect church, please don't join it. Absolutely. Amen. Because Amen. You, you're gonna scatter that church. Amen. <laughs> you see? And that is why I love our church. We are not perfect. We are listen, we are not meant to be perfect. Not you can never, if you find a person who is perfect, please bring that person to me. Mm. Amen? Amen? We are not meant to be perfect. We are meant to do what? Kind of step by step to grow, working towards what? Perfection. Amen? Amen. So this, so Paul start with verse 1. So now I'm going to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 now. So it, it kind of a way to address them. Concerning their party animals, concerning their property, uh, proper, uh, what kind of contest they try to achieve because they are, they are talking about following this person or following that person. Apostle Paul says this to them that that's what I like. He says, he says to them, he says, this is how, this is how one should regard us as what? As servants of Christ and stewards of what? Mystery of God. You want you to regard them as what? As servants. As stewards, you see, mm -hmm. and because Paul introduced this word steward, do you know what steward means? Do you know actually what steward means in this context? You see, because a steward is someone who is doing what looking after something that was being entrusted to you, I mean, something of what high quality, it could be goods, I mean, mm -hmm. like us, we did, I mean, every one of us here were stewards. Amen. Can mm -hmm. we agree on that? Oh, yes. Amen. Because God has given each one of us what gift to do or to make use of it. In fact, the Bible says that the amount of gift that you have, more is required from you. Amen. Every one of us has been given a gift. Whether talent, whether beauty, you see, whether money, whether even your car, whether even your time. The Bible says you need to do what? Use it for the glory of what? God. God. Amen? Amen? And then he continued on verse 2. He said, Moreover, moreover, it is required of the steward that they should be found what? Faithful. Underline that word, faithful. Amen? Amen? This is the key thing when it comes to the word. When you have somebody's property, you need to do what? To be faithful with that person. Amen? Amen. So, in this case, we the children of God and we our master. Jesus Christ, yes. isn't it? Amen. So that that will not be at the end of the day. The Bible says there will be accounting between the master and who and the stewards. And the stewards. You see. So in this case, Paul is trying to address this church. You see, because you remember, first of all, they are demanding whether they're gonna follow this person or follow that person. So Paul can see where their weak points are because they haven't grown to the maturity, and, then, yeah. and that is why he said this is a mature church. You see, it's not a bad thing. 
to have, but then again, at some point, you need to grow out of it. Amen? Amen. And that is why Paul is saying to them, he says, at the end of the day, a master needs to ask these two words to do accounting at the end of the day. When all said and done, a steward needs to give account what you have used your time in this life to do. Amen? Amen. And then, Concerning whatever God has given to you, because the Bible says the more was if more is being given to you, more is going to do what required require from you. You see, so in this in in, in this context, Paul now is, is is pretty much is not acting as their master. You see, because if you have a look what Paul says in verse three, he said this is very, this is very important for us to understand. He said, but with me it is a small thing that I should be judged. By you or by any woman caught. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Mm. Paul is saying to them that you cannot judge him. And he don't want anyone to be judged. Consigned, the, consigned his own ministry. Amen? Amen? Based on what? Based on what? Him. Acting as what? He's himself as still is to what he's saying. Mm. So the church cannot judge him. Just as we today, we cannot judge our pastor. It doesn't matter what our pastor does. We can never judge our pastor, you see. So that is why Paul has so much opposition from these people, you see. Because Paul realized that they are judging him, you see. And the, the, the important information I want to give you out here today is this. You know, people like to say, don't judge. I mean, even if see, see people who don't know, who don't know about Christian, he preaching to them, they tell you, don't judge me. You see, everyone likes to use that word, don't judge. Do you know that you judge today the way you dress before coming here? Do you know that you also judge when you cross the road so a car don't hit you? You see? So when we say don't judge, we need to look into it today to, uh, to actually find out why Paul was saying to them that they cannot judge him. Not by any court, not even by the people in the church, you see? Because at the end of the day, we are all handing a property that belongs to our master. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? The way I preach in this street, you cannot judge me. And the lawyer, I see people coming doing that, and I feel so sorry for that. I keep on telling them, listen, as far as I know, <laughs> I'm doing what I was called to do. You can get your own mic, and you can come the next day, exactly. and you can come and preach. Absolutely. Amen? I see lukewarm Christians coming to tell me what to preach. Mm. You know? <laughs> and I feel so sorry about that. You know, because it's lack of what? Knowledge. Amen? Because at the end of the day, these people are judging Paul. Don't forget... He is their special father. So pretty much, they are, they are disobedient children. Mm -hmm. Because they are not copying from him. Because later in this chapter, he's telling them for, the, to, for, him, for them to do what? To meet at him. But in this case, he's not addressing what is their problem. You see, that's why I love the Bible so much. The Bible is like a good daughter. It doesn't just cure you. Mm -hmm. And then we have a daughter here. And what the daughter is, is they diagnose you, you know. If they put like a table and then they check the wrong signs or whatever they do, they, they check your blood system to find out what is your problem before they do what they cure you. So that they're targeting the right thing. The same way Bible is apostle Paul start addressing their negative. Where the look points are. Amen. And at the end of it, we're going to find out why you kind of tell them, do you want me to come to you with love? Mm. Or you want me to come with you with stick? You see? Because these people are judging him. And they are judging him. But then I swear, if you are judging somebody who you don't have right to judge, and then you are judging the person, and the person is just looking back and is asking himself, actually, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing the clear picture of your lifestyle. You see, you see, like when people come to me, I always say this, I want to see your fruit. If you're not producing good fruit, mm -hmm. I'm telling you something, I don't want to waste time with you. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it is pointless, you see. And that is why Apostle Paul was looking into this church of what the competency of them judging him, you see. And we know today what the Bible talks about judgment, amen. Do you know that we are allowed to judge one another? Of course. Amen. The only thing that can give us authority to judge one another is based on what? Based on the word of God. Is that it? Apart from that, we cannot say anything. I cannot judge you based on my feelings or my emotions or me guessing what is your lifestyle. But if you come and meet me and I'm looking at you and you call yourself a Christian, supposedly you're a Christian, isn't it? And then I start seeing you going to club, I start drinking with the worldly, with the worldly people, I start seeing you smoking, then I can sit back and ask myself, okay, 
from the word of God, I can judge you from that. Amen. Amen. And that is why the Bible says, don't, don't be equally yoked with two, with unbelievers. You see? So we can judge people based on the word, the word of God. You see? Because these people that are judging Paul, and Paul is not, he's looking at their lifetime, and he couldn't even believe it. And that is why he said to them, you cannot judge me. In fact, I don't judge myself. You see, you cannot even take me to the to the to the worldly court. They cannot judge me because why? He only got one master, and that master who can judge me and you today is who is Jesus Christ. Amen. And when Jesus Christ judges us, the Bible says that we can judge one another, and God can judge us based on what is written. You see, that is why Bible is so good because you can know the end of your life. Can we agree on that? We can know our end of our life, amen? Because the Bible says, if you come to Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of your life, if you give your life to him, when you die, you know where you're going. You see, we're not living in the dark. You see, the word of God is written. And what is written, the Bible says, cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. amen? amen? And the Bible says, when we judge, in the book of Luke, it says, we should judge what? Righteously. So that means we can judge one another. So for example, if something happened in this church now, pastor can come to me, sometimes he do. You can, you can just send me a text or call me and say, okay, look at what is going on. And at the end of the day, I have to accept it because he's like the Apostle Paul here, isn't it? And he's writing a letter to them. And this time around, he can do that from his mobile phone. He can do it by text. He can call me, you see? And now it's for me to do what? To go, to go by what he says because at the end of the day, he's not talking it off. Right? He's talking it through the word of God. If, if, you, if you cannot disagree, you can, you can send a text back to him, and then he's going to give you bad scripture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that is only way where we can judge one another. Amen? Amen? Apart from that, we are not allowed to do that, you see? Because people like to say this. You know when Joshua says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, he said, make sure you remove the, the speck is in your own eyes before you can tell your brother <coughs> to remove it because you yourself, you've got your own lung. In your own eyes, you see what this actually means is this don't judge, don't be a hypocrite. You see, if you're not a hypocrite, you can make a perfect judgment. We are called to do what to do to judge. In fact, the Bible said at the end of the day, have a look in the book of Peter, he said that the judgment will start from where? From the, the house of, of the Lord. Lord. The Amen? Of God, yeah. So we can judge one another. If I see you going to the wrong path, I'm gonna send you a test. Mm. I'm not going to say, oh, just let it fly. No, if I'm doing that, I'm doing myself this service. Mm. It doesn't matter who you are. I will send you a test to tell you what you are going to run. Uh, because why? Because we love each other. Amen? Amen. So that's the standard that we have today that we can judge one another only based on the word of God. Amen? Amen. And then if you have a look, what Apostle Paul was trying to explain to them as well. If you notice what he was talking about, uh, he's, saying, he's saying here, he said here from verse 5, he said, therefore do not pronounce judgment before the time. And what is the time he's talking about? He explained what the judgment is only when the Lord comes. He's saying, I don't know your heart, you don't know my heart. Have a look in the book of Acts 1, 24. Mm. He said, God knows the heart. Mm. He said, when I look at you now, I can only see you. Well, I don't know what is in your heart. You don't know what is in my heart. I can just guess. But guessing is not the right judgment. You see? Guessing is that you are, we are walking in the dark. And we, we shall go. We are not allowed to do or to walk in the dark because we are already living in the mother's light of Jesus Christ. You see? And that is why the word of God is so important for us to do. Because Apostle Paul and I is telling them that only when the Lord comes, that only person who can judge him is God. Because the Bible says it that what is hidden, God is gonna dis gonna disclose it. The thing that is hidden from me and from you, because why the God knows the purpose of each person's heart. You see, I remember when I came into the ministry, the first thing I said to Pastor, what about all this man of God making so much money, and they they are using it, and because I was if I was coming that there was listening, I was like, okay, they have so much money, but why are they misusing it? You know, and Pastor will put me in my put it put me in the place right away. We're like. It's only God can, can judge them. I can judge them. You can judge them. Because why? You don't know what is in their heart. If a man of God have a, have a flight today to go and pray somewhere, have his own private jet, I cannot judge him. You know? I cannot judge him. 
because it depends on what he has in his heart to, to use that flight for. Whatever he's doing, if he's doing it for the glory of God, so be it, you see. Because the Bible says, it depends on how much God giving to you. The, if it's more is given to you, then more is going to be required of you. So that, is, so that is why if you see them going around, flying from this country to another country to preach, so be it. You just have to let it be because we cannot judge. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the one that he also touches me about what, if it's not about, uh, because we know that with the children of God, we cannot be judged like with the worldly people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why? Because from what Apostle Paul is trying to explain here, if you have a look in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 1, he said, there's no, therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. Because we know that when all said and done, only person who can judge us is Lord. But then again, he's our master. So if he's going to judge us only based on accounting, we're going to give back to him what we have used our time in this life to do. Just like I said earlier on, all of us here, we are stewards of the Lord. So that means the Lord master needs to ask you, what have we done? You see, our judgment is not with the worldly people, the same judgment. We are not going to send judgment. You see, the Bible call it, uh, the Bible call it a bima. You see, it's like if I want to look into it, it says that it's a special, uh, special judgment that God will hold only for only for war, only for believers. You see, and if you have a look in the first Corinthians chapter 2, uh, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, he said, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us must receive what I have done in their body according to what I have done, whether it is good or bad. You see, so now that's something that you need to need to sink in, whether it's good or bad, whatever you've done with your body, not just with your money, with your body, that is gonna be judged. You see, even Romans 14, verse 10 says this: Why do you pass judgment on your brother or your sister? Or don't you know, don't you know that you yourself or your brother and sister will be stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ? Amen. And that is why I cannot pass a judgment anymore. I mean, because the Bible says, "Fear come by hearing and hearing what mm -hmm. the word of God." You see, and that is the way I want to base my life. You see, because when all said and done, the only person who can judge me, I mean, the only person who can judge us here is our Master. I mean, and we are holding something that is given to us, which is precious. You have time. They make use of that time. There's no more excuses. You have beauty. The Bible says, "Use it for the Lord." Can you sing? You see, for the Lord, don't use it to the worldly people to make money. Mm -hmm. Amen. You have legs, if you like to walk around, then use your legs, then start walking to the right places. If you have you like to speak, then use your mouth to do what to preach the good news of what Jesus Christ is saying. So that is why Apostle Paul was was applying all these things to them, and he was even talking about himself and Apostle um, his, uh, Apollos for the benefit of what he said, he said for them to do or not to go beyond for that was written. Mm. You see, and it's a warning for me and for you. The only way we can judge one another is to do it through the word of God. Amen. Amen. And even when we do it, we are doing it because why we love one another. Amen. I mean, every parent here knows we are crazy about our children. I don't know, but we are crazy about our children, you see. But then again, if you keep on telling them not to rebel, not to rebel, at some point you need to put a line that you have to draw. You are doing that based on what? Because you love them. Apostle Paul was doing the same thing to this church because he became a special father. Mm -hmm. And that is why he couldn't believe what they were doing. You see? And that is why if you go to other, place, other places in the chapter, you can hear them talking about he's so tough when he writes. But he's telling them that he's the same person as well. Mm -hmm. And that is why he suggests to them, what do you want? Do you want him to come to see you with Cain? Do you, or do you want him to come to you with love? You see, in this sense of what Apostle Paul is trying to say to them is this. Do you want me to come with more correction? Because your heart is not ready. Or do you want me to come with you with more love? Because now your heart is ready. Amen. It's not a physical thing. But it's, it's not even a threat. But it's like a warning. Amen. And every parent has to do the same thing to your children. At some point... When you want your children, they don't listen. At some point, you need to take an action, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, and that is what parents do. Why? Because we love our children. You see, and also love the three things that he was asking them here. Uh, but if you have a look from verse eight now to thirteen, 
I'm gonna read. He said, already, already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Without us, you have become kings. And and what that you have, and what that you have did reign, so that you might share it with the rule with other. So Apostle Paul kind of like I would say it sounds like sarcasm. You see, because Apostle Paul using this language, because of what this church, they are, they are so prideful. You know, their attitude was so bad to the point by Apostle Paul is asking them. They are living like we're already growing with Christ. Do you know that we are going to rule with Christ mm -hmm. for 1,000 years? Hallelujah. Amen. Because that, that, I mean, that should give you joy. Rule. Amen. Yeah. But judge. I think we're going to rule and judge, judge at the same time. So that means all these people that see you making fun of you, it's okay. No need to, no need to worry because at the end of the day, we're going to rule. We're going to judge them Absolutely. and we're going to rule them. Absolutely. You see? But, but at this moment, this church is already celebrating mm. like they're already ruined. I mean, everybody knows at the moment we are what? Relation time. Absolutely. Amen. We have a check time, eh? Me and Pastor we witness it the other day. Amen. Amen. So if we are if we are still in this uh, humiliation time, do you know? Can you can any of you tell me the person who was humiliated in this life? Our Lord and Savior was humiliated. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was humiliated by this word. Amen. He was rejected, he was abused. In fact, the Bible said the world did not even extend him. Mm. You see? And then what did they do to him? They finally the world. They crucify him. And that is why I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we are in the time of what? Humiliation time. Absolutely. And what this tried to tell me and you is this. You. you know this photo that we see? We see the picture of Jesus Christ look so nice, even in the cross, all these things. I'm telling you something, man. The Roman Empire, when they crucify, they don't put blood on you. Mm. Mm. Then they kill him. Do you know why? They want to humiliate him. Even the cross is a rugged cross. It's a rugged cross. Absolutely. You see, all this time we put all this in, it was a rugged cross. I'll tell you something. What they have done to our Lord, hmm. I'll tell you something. When you think about it, remember that, remember when you were preaching about the blood of the cross? Yeah. That message touched me because I was driving home. I, I couldn't. I couldn't feel anything. I couldn't. I, I was driving, but it was not me that driving because I can feel the pain of that message. You know, I saw you shedding tears. You know, that was that. If that if that message don't, I'm gonna post it again. If that message don't touch you, that means there's something wrong with you. <laughs> I'm telling you. You see, because we are in the humiliation period. You see. Now I have a prayer story for you in the book of um, Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse ten to thirteen. He said that we have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. Mm. 11. For the bodies of those animals and whose blood is being brought into the holy places by the high priest are sacrificed for the sin we are born outside the camp. Outside the camp, yeah. Then 12. So, so Jesus Christ also suffered outside the gate in order to be sanctified the people through his own blood. And the, the verse 13. Mm. I want you to pay attention to it. He said, therefore, let us go to outside. him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. Mm. Now, this is, a, this is a call for what? Evangelism. Evangelism. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you are playing it safe, mm. my advice to you, don't, don't do it. Mm. Amen? Amen. You cannot go into the kingdom of God because, of, because you are a nice person. Mm. You cannot go into the kingdom of God because you have beauty. You cannot go into the kingdom of God because you have good looks. You cannot go into the kingdom of God because you have money. No. If you want to go into the kingdom of God, the Bible says what? Go outside and be humiliated like your master was humiliated. Mm -hmm. And if you are not being humiliated, think, I think, I think, just think for a moment. Let it digest and think for a moment. What are you doing with your time? Amen. Amen. Do you know when Jesus Christ said that we have 24 hours time to do whatever I want to do? Do you know that your, your, your 24 hours could be maybe you're already at the age of 60, mm -hmm. maybe, you're, maybe you're at the age of 50, maybe at the age of 17. You need to use that time to do what? To do what you need to do. And what you need to do is what the Bible says here. The message is loud and clear. What did he say? He said, go outside the camp. The camp. Mm -hmm. You see? We come here, we fellowship. 
Hallelujah. Yeah? Amen. But you Don't have go to outside. go outside. Face the challenge. And face the challenge. If you have not been humiliated, let me tell you something. You are plenty safe. Remember last time what we saw in Shepherd Station? Listen, <laughs> the more I read the word of God, the more I'm kind of like get more embodied. You know why? Because if you are playing it safe, you cannot make it. The Bible said that if you want to gain it, you lose it. But if you are willing to lose it, you will gain it. Yeah. It's like the opposite of this world. You know, in this world, people give you the drive. You have to go and do this to end that. But in the word of God, it's the opposite. You have to lose everything and then to gain. You see? So my message for you today is this. As a child of God, our righteousness, our goodness, and everything that we have in this life, it is unworthy. You see? Because your master was humiliated based on what? To save you. So you have to be humiliated based on what? To save another soul. Amen? Amen. That's why Jesus Christ said, carry your cross and pick up your cross and follow me. Mm. You know, these days, most of us don't want to get humiliated. The only way I can describe that is because of pride. Absolutely. You see? So if you are not willing to pick up your own cross, are not willing to lose it, and then I'm telling you, you are in the wrong place. Mm. You are in the wrong place. Because your master was humiliated. I want that to sink in. He was abused. You know, the society today, if someone abused, he's all over the news. People go crazy. Oh, let's do this to that person. Do you know that Jesus Christ was abused? Absolutely. I mean, I don't know about those people. Those they, they don't even brush their teeth. They were spatting on him. <laughs> Just think about that, you know. They were spatting on him. <laughs> you know, they were cursing on him. Yes, someone was passing on me. <laughs> yes, following me. <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, so you see what Pastor is saying here. Someone was passing on him. When when we had our own, was it on? Was it was on Friday? Yeah, Friday. Friday morning you came. Yeah. And the guy was all over. all over. Okay, we we kind of agree that we must accept this. It should be known to you because if you are not being abused, your master abused, then that means you are serving the wrong God. That is why most people hate Christianity because when they look at the cross, they saw Jesus Christ stretching his hand and he was bleeding. He said, if it's God, why didn't he have been said? Do you understand the point? And the Bible says, at the end, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they were doing. And he died for you. Just in that way. So the same way the Bible wants you to do or to move away from your comfort zone. Move away from your comfort zone and go and evangelize because Apostle Paul is telling, I urge you to be imitators of me. He was even telling them, you are just celebrating that you have won it. But he said he risked his life. Why? Because why? Okay, put it in this way. You know those days when they captured a soldier, what did they do? They blindfold them, they put them in the back of the horse and they drive the person. And that is why Apostle Paul was saying, we, like the people who have already been sacrificed. You see, the same way Apostle Paul suffered everything, and the same way Apostle Paul, who preached the good news to us, was also, do you know what they did to him? He was writing to these people, he was waiting for his death time. They cut off his head. Just, just think about it, they cut off his head. And this is the man, this is the word of God that we are reading today. Now, if you can go home and just digest this for a moment, I kind of arise and ask yourself, if I, am I doing the right thing? Amen? Because mm -hmm. the word of God said, faith come, faith come by hearing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, and the yeah, hearing the word of God. 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 And the word of God we are, you are hearing today, your master was crucified. Mm. Your master was humiliated. Mm. Your master's was spat on. Mm. Your master's was whipped. And you as a steward, do you know that there will be accounting? From the word of God we just read, there will be what? Accounting. So that means when, when your life is finished, you're going to sit in the bema seat of Jesus Christ. Don't forget one thing. We're all saved. We're all going to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. None of us here will lose heaven. Amen. 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 It is a guarantee from the word of God. I'm not speaking off head. Amen. It is a guarantee from the word of God. Romans 10 verse 9. Amen. If say with heart one believe.
that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess it with the mouth, the Bible says what? You are saved. Mm. Amen? But you need to give accounting. Mm. So you ask yourself, did Jesus Christ say have 24 hours in a day? He's telling you to do what? Within that 24 hours to use, to use it. So that means you cannot give God excuses. Mm -hmm. The Bible says our God is a consuming fire. Amen. So that means he's going to consume every for excuses that day. That is my point I'm trying to make now. You see, because I'm bringing this message to, to close, you see. Because Apostle Paul is saying to them, Do you want me to come with you with Cain? Mm -hmm. Or do you want me to come with you with love? You see? I like to I like to end this message is talk is cheap. Amen. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he says here is this because he says to them, for the kingdom of God. Are you listening? Yeah. He said, For the kingdom of God is not consistent with what talk. Mm -hmm. Like some arrogant people say, what with power. Mm -hmm. You see, if I tell you what is in my mind, you're gonna be shocked. Mm -hmm. You remember you remember like you remember Elijah when when the people were coming broadhead. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what he did? He caused them in the name of the Lord. What happened? The two bear sheep just came out and tear the forty people into pieces. Mm -hmm. I wish I can have that power. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You remember, you remember um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Moses and Aaron. When Karan family and all the all tried to play holy. Yeah. And try to put the man of God. The Bible says, Moses says something new is gonna happen. What happened? Yeah. The Bible says the ground opened up. And they were all swallowed. I need that power. Mm. Amen? Amen. Now you know how you know how my heart is. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but 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 the power he's talking about is only power that Christians have. Mm. And that power is what? Holy Spirit. Mm. It's not the kingdom of God doesn't come with just what? The power is the Holy Spirit. Why is the Holy Spirit? You see, every religion can boast about. Try to amend their time, try to pray five times, try to do all these things. They don't have the Holy Spirit. You see? Because the Holy Spirit made me to stand here today and preach to you. Because the Holy Spirit changed my lifestyle two, more than two, I would say, I would say, I keep on saying two years, more than two years ago. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You can bear the witness, you yourself standing here. You of you sitting down here, you also know that the same power that was in me is also in you. That is why you can come to church. Because without this power, you will not be here today. Without this power, you will be somewhere else. Last night, maybe you have hangover. Maybe you will be sleeping by now. You see, and that's the difference between us believers, and the Christians, world, the world, and the worldly world, people. Absolutely. When people talk about miracle, they are looking for another miracle. No, this is the miracle here. Mm. I mean, you are the miracle. Hallelujah. We are all the miracle of what the power that is in the word of God. Yeah. That's why Apostle Paul said the word of God did not just come with talk. But it comes with what? Come with action and power. Amen? Amen. 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 Bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.